No, the Zodiac Killer's identity isn't finally revealed. The Zodiac Killer's identity has been a mystery for decades. The name of the serial killer who wreaked havoc in San Francisco in the late 1960s looked destined to be lost to history, along with so many others. Investigators have been unable to solve the killer's gruesome puzzle for years, despite receiving ciphers sent to law enforcement and media sources. The mysterious case has even spawned films like David Fincher's Zodiac. Now, decades later, it appears that investigators may have uncovered the Zodiac Killer's identity. A team of investigators known as the Case Breakers believes it has identified the Zodiac Killer. Composed of journalists, law enforcement investigators, and military intelligence officials, the team has an impressive track record in the field and has worked on many unresolved cases, including the strange disappearance of former labor union leader Jimmy Hoffa. Who precisely is the latest suspect in the Zodiac Killer case? Welcome to Bad Things. In this video, we are going to have a look at the newest Zodiac Killer suspect. Why Gary Francis Post could be the Zodiac Killer, and why the search for the killer may not be over. Gary Francis Post was a Californian who was identified as the legendary Zodiac Killer in a news release by a group of 40 detectives and specialists known as the Case Breakers. A Zodiac expert, however, has already refuted this hypothesis, saying that he does not believe Post was Zodiac. Post died in 2018. According to online sources, he lived in Groveland, California, died at the age of 80, and owned a painting company. The hypothesis that Post was the Zodiac is already being challenged by other Zodiac specialists. Tom Voigt, owner of ZodiacKiller.com and author of the book Zodiac Killer – Just the Facts, declared that the theory that Post was the Zodiac Killer is completely bogus and hot rubbish. Another team deciphered one of Zodiac's enigmatic messages in 2020, according to the New York Times. The message deciphered by David Orenchak, Sam Blake, and Jarl Van Eyck stated, I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch me, and I am not afraid of the gas chamber, according to the New York Times, citing their work. But what do the case breakers base their evidence on? Number 1. The case breakers claim they have matched Post's scars to the Zodiac scars on his forehead. The scars on his forehead were a vital piece of evidence for case breakers that Post was possibly the Zodiac. The case breakers press release includes a news report about an automobile accident that occurred in Clinton, Indiana. One airman from the Roxville radar station was killed and another was severely injured. The case breakers believe that Post's unusual forehead scar was caused by car accident wounds in 1959. They featured a sketch of the Zodiac by a San Francisco Police Department artist who some believe had a distinctive forehead scar. The renowned sleuths have recovered new physical and forensic evidence, signed up eyewitnesses, filed court affidavits, and secured decades of pictures from Post's former darkroom, says the press release. That includes photographic proof, as a former FBI agent put it, of irrefutable scars on our Zodiac's forehead. Spotted by three witnesses and an observing cop, then later passed on to the 1969 SFPD sketch artist. Voigt refutes this by stating, No witness ever described lines on Zodiac's forehead. Those lines were simply added by the sketch artist to fill in the sketch. He noted that a revised sketch no longer has the same line. I wouldn't even call him a suspect. I don't think he checks any boxes whatsoever. In fact, if he does have scars on his forehead, that's a real effing good reason to rule him out," Voigt said. Voigt isn't the only one that has his reservations about this supposed evidence. The large Zodiac killer community on Reddit doesn't buy it either. The Bates Murder The Case Breakers team is confident that Post also murdered Cherry Joe Bates in Riverside, California, and they are trying to find DNA evidence that matches him. However, Riverside police do not believe he is Bates' murderer. 
According to a news release from Casebreakers, an expert CSI team from two Maryland institutions were prohibited from analyzing hairs found in the clenched fist of a slain young student more than 50 years ago. The experts are confident that they belong to a newly identified Zodiac killer suspect. They claim that after Cherry Joe Bates's body was discovered on October 30, 1966, the Riverside Police Department dutifully refrigerated the hairs, skin, and blood found under her fingernails. The chief at the time, Lieutenant King Keed, said the night attack outside of the town's college library left her with 42 stab wounds and almost decapitated. Public Information Officer of the Riverside Police Department Ryan J. Railsback stated that the department is 100% certain that Bates was murdered by someone other than the Zodiac. According to the Casebreakers, the RPD has refused to permit a simple comparison of her computer-coded DNA with the sequence of Gary F. Post, who forensic experts now consider to be a very strong suspect. The casebreakers wanted to share all of these results with the RPD, including the newly deceased Post's DNA. The department's current police chief is the ninth chief to refuse to consider the notorious killer, despite the FBI referring to Bates as the sixth victim in 1975. It would only take a few minutes to compare Post's DNA to confirm or deny him as a suspect. San Francisco was a recognized focus of the Zodiac Killer. Bates died in Riverside, California in 1966. Bates, age 18, was discovered dead in an alley on the Riverside City College campus. The Riverside Police Department's Homicide Cold Case Unit stated, Our Homicide Cold Case Unit has determined the murder of Cherry Joe Bates in 1966 as not related to the Zodiac Killer. Voigt, surprisingly, agrees with the Casebreakers team and believes that Bates was killed by the Zodiac. The internet sleuths aren't convinced, though. Although there are some convincing pieces of circumstantial evidence, an overwhelming number think that Post is not the Zodiac. One Reddit contributor came up with a theory in relation to the psychological differences in shooting victims and stabbing them, as happened in the Bates case. Quote, I agree, but, and this is a big but, there was most definitely an undeniable progression in Zodiac's attacks, with each one becoming slightly more balls out than the previous attack. Number one, goes to a very remote area, most likely sneaks up on the car, shoots and runs. Number two, goes to a slightly less remote area, sneaks up on car, shoots and runs. Number three, goes to a vastly open outdoor area in broad daylight, wearing a kooky disguise, has an extended conversation with two people on the shore of a lake where there are often passing boats, and then ties up and stabs the people. He then sticks around long enough to write a message on the victim's car door. Number four, hails a taxi in a major city, gets driver to take him to a wealthy neighborhood, shoots the driver, sticks around for a few minutes to tear off a piece of the driver's shirt. Bear in mind, pedestrians and other motorists could be passing by at any time, and there are loads of homes with windows facing the spot. Rummages through the driver's pockets, wipes down the cab, presumably to erase fingerprints, then calmly walks off. Bates was stabbed. While Zodiac certainly proved he was capable of stabbing someone, I strongly believed he had to build up the courage and confidence to do this. Shooting someone is a cowardly attack. Stabbing a person is intimate. I really think that trying to tie Zodiac to Bates is jamming a square peg into a round hole. Post Posse The Air Force veteran turned house painter Post, who may or may not have been the renowned Zodiac killer, seems to have been the ringleader of a gang of men he groomed as killing machines. The casebreakers alleged that Post maintained a peculiar double life in a remote Sierra Nevada town following the murders. The Zodiac inexplicably disappeared in 1974 after sending a farewell message to the media. The Casebreakers team reports that Post moved to Groveland, California in 1970. He moved to the town in the High Sierras after marrying a local woman with a young child. The suspected murderer posed as a pleasant house painter 
and was well liked by the community. In the scenic mountain hamlet approximately 26 miles west of Yosemite, he started recruiting young men in their late teens and early 20s to form his own criminal organization. Locals referred to the approximately 10 men as the Posse, and they stayed faithful to Post until his death in 2018. He would take them deep into the mountains to teach them how to hike and murder. He also taught them how to make pipe bombs. If a new police officer arrived in town, he would have the posse throw rocks through their windows to force them to leave. He was also active in lending firearms to suicidal individuals in the community. According to Case Breaker's leader, Cole Bear, the men would embark on trekking excursions into the mountains to murder animals for amusement. One member of the posse, named by Colbert only as Will, fled Groveland in 2010 after seeing Zodiac Killer sketches and confronting Post. Will, whose real name is Chris Avery, informed TV presenter Dale Julin about Post. Julin, who had studied the Zodiac case for years, claimed to have deciphered certain cryptograms using Post's name as a basis of the code after meeting Avery. Julin also submitted court papers stating that Avery informed him that Post confessed to him that he was the Zodiac murderer. When Avery questioned Post, are you the Zodiac, Post allegedly attacked him with a five-pound hammer. Colbert's Groveland contacts tipped him to what he thinks to be a treasure trove of important information, proving that Post was the Zodiac killer. According to the investigator, Post started giving away his firearms, handgun parts, gunpowder, bullets, and shell casings to favorite locals a few years before his death. Three forensic laboratories are now examining the evidential treasure, according to Colbert. He thinks that current procedures, such as the identification of fingerprints on shell casings, may match official police evidence and persuade doubting investigators that Post is their man. As with all unsolved cases, there will be controversy. The internet and the multitudes of amateur sleuths on it has a double-edged sword effect. The internet has opened up communication and cooperation with people who might have pertinent new evidence, but also has the ability to accuse innocent people of heinous crimes. Gary Francis Post may be one such person. Although there is circumstantial evidence against him, a large number of people believe that he is a far reach as a suspect, shown by a poll taken on Reddit. Was Post the Zodiac Killer? We will have to wait for more concrete evidence to surface before the decades-long mystery is solved. Thank <laughs> you.